welcome to the new video into that we will discuss the ETL testing interview questions and answers for the role of ETL tester and the experience is required three to five years so let's begin so basically the first question is explain about yourself so in in the in this question actually so you can answer like you can explain yourself about yourself and your experience and your the skill sets actually and what are the technologies you have worked you just mentioned into that the next question is like explain the about the, your pro recent project architecture so into that you explain your recent projects actually so according to the candidate uh, the project architectures are different actually so in this uh, interview actually the candidate is having the project is on the data migrations so basically uh, the, that's why actually the question is on the data migrations so that uh, the question number one is what are what types of testing is done in your data migration projects so basically the data migration projects is basically to migrate the data from the one one database to another database it may be from database to cloud or it's from the cloud to cloud actually so basically it involves the data validations data integrity performance testing and uat testing actually user acceptance testing so basically uh, the, the the validations we perform that is source data validations actually to validate the source schema then data validations the metadata validations uh, count validations and we just ensure like without any any loss the data is loaded into the target actually so these types of testing we perform in the under the data migration project next question in which environment you have performed the testing how do you validate the live data so uh, in this project basically we perform the validations under the qa uat and the prod region so basically the for the for the prod region actually so you know the data is in the live uh, live uh, data we receive the live data actually on the particular day so we got the filter conditions from the dev team actually developer and according to that actually we run the queries actually we execute the queries and into that we validate the count actually of course the count is changed actually so we have a, our internal uh, automation tools actually so into that we have run the run the queries actually source and the target uh, queries actually and uh, after that actually we you know uh, we uh, make a samples actually and according to the we uh, match the count actually and uh, into that count actually we validate the data here so likewise we perform the data validation uh, uh, we perform the data validation of course we perform the metadata validations we uh, we ensure like the data type and all actually because we already done into the previous non-production environment but just we have to just check uh, into the product environment as well if there is any issues we reported it now the next question is how do you perform the testing on PII data so basically the testing of personal identify informations data it involves the ensuring the data masking actually uh, basically in the non-production environments uh, basically in the QA and UAT environments uh, it is not applicable for the prod environment it is not possible to validate it on the live data because data is masked actually so uh, from the developer team uh, provided a sheet actually whatever that they have just you know the particular they identify the certain columns of the data uh, PII actually like names then contact numbers the email so all these are the PA information so they mask the data actually and they provided like uh, you know the, they provided us uh, the sheet actually where they are masking the data so according to that actually we have to just validate like uh, into that like suppose if the name actually they provided uh, like uh, uh, certain xxx so when we are you know running the query we will get that xx so it means the data is validated so xx they replace that they mask the data and they provided uh, that is a uh, for security purpose they provided that uh, 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 xyz or some some something actually so likewise actually we perform that uh, data uh, validations uh, into the pii data next is next question what is the difference between test plan and the test strategy so test plan is a document which is outlined the scope approach and res resources uh, schedule of intended test activities uh, it is uh, details what will be tested whom and when it is tested actually basically the test plan is for particular project actually so we have to uh, you know prepare the plan and the test strategy is generally it is a high level documents actually in the particular project in particular company suppose if you have that four to five projects 
so you should provide the test strategies actually which is a high level documents which describe the general approach of the testing uh, approach and methodologies okay so which you can achieve the testing objectives actually so likewise we perform that test plan and test uh, strategies the uh, next question is what contents is available in the test plan so basically then the test plan actually typically which includes the scope of testing objectives resources the schedule the test deliverables risk analysis uh, then entry and exit criteria criteria so all these document these informations is available in the test plan tell me about the testing closure process of course in the testing closure process actually we have to uh, we have we uh, we we given the sign off actually we given the sign off to the stakeholders so we prepare the document sign off documents into that we use the test logs we use the test cases um, uh, defect sheets actually so attach the defect sheets uh, so we provided that sign off then we provided the rtm documents actually then um, we provided the test test closure report actually tcr documents so these types of documents we normally provided for the testing closure next how do you identify the dimension and fact tables in your projects so basically the dimension tables we identify uh, like there is a de detailed descriptive uh, descriptive attributes uh, is present into that so we consider it's a dimensions and the fact is contains the only the numbers actually or quantitative data so according to that we analyze the data uh, from the from the database like data uh, from the data warehouse the data schema understanding uh, understanding the business logic and the mapping uh, from the mapping actually so we can identify the dimension and fact tables next question how do you know about incremental load data and how to validate it so the incremental load data is uh, basically you know the adding the new data actually and uh, so uh, so it is actually updating the existing data so it's a uh, you know we get that there is some uh, audit fields it generates some audit fields like timestamp data timestamp actually uh, flags so according to that actually we identify this is incremental data so we are validating we use that uh, timestamp that is the row begin date row end date or start start date or end date actually so we use the filter conditions and then we uh, you know we take the data actually so we check the data timestamp checksums and perform row counts before and after the load to ensure uh, you know that uh, incremental load actually next question what are the common bugs in your project so in our projects actually the data mismatch uh, we got the data mismatch count mismatch the etl process failures actually we found that the data is not loaded actually because of uh, etl process failure uh, then performance issues actually we have uh, automation tools and that tool is failure uh, the tool uh, tool is not properly work actually sometimes uh, the queries are also not fired and it taken more time actually so these performance issues there happen incorrect data transformation is also be found from the mapping documents so these types of uh, common bugs we found in our projects tell me about difference between self join and normal join yeah of course the self join is a join of table with itself to compare the rows actually within the same table a normal join involves joining two different tables based on related columns actually so there are uh, two columns uh, related columns uh, from the two tables so this is called as a normal joins now the next question is on sql actually so basically um, in this there are two tables table a and table b we have uh, id columns so they have given some numbers actually and we find out uh, we should find out the count of given two tables uh, on the join conditions the first one is the inner joins left joins right joins and full joins okay so inner joins inner joins is nothing but actually we will find out the common records from these two tables okay so we will discuss that the inner joins here you can see the common records are 1 1 1 okay here is actually 1 1 so i have uh, it is given here is given the uh, the records how it is match actually 1 1 then next 1 1 1 1 so it is uh, almost it is three times actually so, so totally uh, you can see there is a two ones and in the right hand, uh, left hand side and uh, right hand side there are three so three multiply by two it will be the six so we have six one such matching ones the next is here actually we have a three 
so 3 it will match with the two threes so 2 into 1 it will be 2 so 6 plus 2 it will be 8 okay and this null is not matched with any any values actually null is nothing actually okay never match null with null okay it's not possible so so up to this for confusion purpose uh, the interviewer normally provided this types of nulls or blanks actually so it is never match okay so it is the answer in a join is eight actually all are matching records whereas the left join in the left join actually you can see the left side whatever the data is available from the left side we will take as it is so we will first take a matching records from the left side actually so we can what like two two multiplied by three six then this three multiplied by uh, one plus uh, there is two uh, multiplied by two it's a two six plus two is eight this two is not non matching here so two will be matched with null uh, it's not matching actually we just write the normal write the non matching records two with null and null is never match with anyone so we uh, here write as a two with null and this three three so the left join answer will be nine actually okay next is a right join in the right join the same thing is happened like but we will take that consider the right side actually first okay we will take a common records of course the common report records are eight and we will find out the non-matching records the non-matching is here four so four will be uh, it will be null four okay and this null null will never match actually so not consider it so here you can see uh, after this we will get the four uh, there is a null so the right join count is nine and for full outer joints it is the matching of uh, matching records and non-matching so matching is up to eight this two null and next is null four okay from the board table so full uh, outer join is 10 okay so um, this is actually on the joining next is write an sql query to display the employees who are earning more than their managers so we consider there is a employee tables actually so into that table uh, here actually we have you know there is a single table so we use that self join here so here uh, you can see the select e1 dot employee id uh, e1 uh, as a salary from employees as a alias name as a e1 so these they are taken from the first table join okay employee e2 on the e1 dot manager id equal to e2 dot employee id so here we are matching with a manager id and employee id the condition is where e1 salary e1 dot salary is greater than e2 dot salary okay so this is a self join uh, we used here and according to that we will get the answer is like the employee uh, who are earning more than their, their managers actually from these tables okay so because here we already mentioned the so salary is greater than uh, this e2 okay so this is about um, this query next query is display the maximum salary department wise so department wise this is an easy method so department wise we can use the select then department id then maximum salary as a max salary we can mention from the employees so here we are department wise so whenever there is a mention any department wise so we should mention as a group by the department id okay so we will get that department wise salary okay otherwise another matter is like we can use the dense rank here so you can use the dense rank query as well so to identify like select star form uh, like select employee dot star dense rank over the partition by department number you can use the partition by department number order by the salary uh, descending and uh, you can use that uh, that uh, dense rank as equal to one so you will get that uh, department wise maximum salary okay so thank you for watching this video please subscribe like and share the channel thank you